the film just feels like an events film. When you just look at the set pieces, the freak, like that music from Daniel Elfman was just incredible. The Batmobile, what the Batmobile looked like. Batman, 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 Batman. So that's how we're, we're, we're starting things off as we're building up to the new Batman movie with a review, a little look back at, you know, all of the Batman films. Come on, so you have to understand what Batman was when it came out in 1989 and what a big deal it was. Because remember, obviously you had Superman 1, but Superman 1 did not make the kind of all-encompassing cultural impact that Batman did. And Batman was one of those kind of like perfect storms because you had a guy like a Tim Burton who came in, did, you know, PB's Big Adventure and so forth. Michael Keaton who had done Mr. Mom, Clean and Sober. So you had two very interesting kind of individuals coming together to do um, a Batman film. And the thing about, the, about what Batman is that, you know, when you look at the, at, at the film, it's a lot darker, a lot edgier, and a lot more psychological than you'd want to think. Because, you know, when you, when you watch the first time, you obviously you, you look at the Joker, Batman, and everything. But when you view it again, it is actually deeply psychological for a film that was pretty much aimed for all audiences, man. And I think, you know, with Batman, it's the reason why the film works so well. Obviously, you have Jack Nicholson who had an amazing performance as the Joker. And even if he, people knew he was already going to be good, he sort of already exceeded expectations based on just how good he, he was in the role. But I think what makes it so amazing is Tim Burton's vision and how specific his vision was of Gotham City with regards to the, to, to the world of Gotham, the aesthetic. Um, the look of, of Batman, the feeling of, of Batman, and also Michael Keaton. Because, see, whenever people view Batman, they say, oh, no, Joker was the main guy. The most interesting character in that Batman film is Batman. Joker is just the most fun character because he's loud, he's exuberant, he's an extrovert. But the guy that is really the most interesting is Batman because you're like, Bruce Wayne is... You're like, okay, why is he so reclusive? Why is he so laid back? What is he thinking about? Why can't he have... A relationship because there is so much said without really saying anything. And I think one of the best lines in the whole film is when um, Vicky Vale asks Bruce Wayne, like, wait, why did you do this? And Bruce Wayne just says, like, because I have to know and else can. But he, he says, like, I don't even know what to make of this. So he doesn't even know what to make of Batman. And I think that was a great kind of approach that I think is it somehow. And Tim, that's important hand to the character. Whereas that this... It's so crazy that a guy would dress up as a bat. It can't be explained. So, without actually saying it, which is why I like, and I like films that don't really preach to you anymore. It's the case of films that preach to you. Without saying it and putting it in the script, it's pretty much said, if you interpreted it that, this guy is mad. He's crazy. And what happened to him always with his parents made him a little bit nuts. And what he's doing is crazy. It isn't normal. It's 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 a thing a man will do. So a, so it's from going from the Boy Scouts of Superman where I'm the hero, I'm the good guy, I'm here to help people, to a guy who he's not even sure why he's dressed up as a bat and why he's he's he's, he's doing it this way and who might be a little bit crazy. It's just such a crazy, much more interesting protagonist than the known protagonist you would you would get in this in these kinds of films man but i think it's the film just feels like an events film when you just look at the set pieces the freak like that music from daniel elfman was just incredible the batmobile what the batmobile looked like and um, the showdown and just how that showdown is done when he, he meets with with the, with, with, with the joker and i think this is one of the things that fans I got against the film, which is that, oh my gosh, like, the Joker didn't kill his his parents, and why would, and Batman doesn't kill? You have to remember that this was pre-MCU. 
So this was back in 1989. Back then, it was one and done. There was no such thing as, oh, let's wait for a sequel. So Tim Burton was like, no, I am, I am making a film in the feeling that this is the only Batman film I'm going to make. So if you know that you're only going to make one film, it has to be self-contained. So there has to be a beginning, middle, end, and there has to be a resolution. So because he's thinking that I'm only going to make one film, there isn't going to be a sequel because this is pre-MCU, pre-franchise time. He was like, I have to make this guy be the guy who killed his parents, and I'm going to make him have retribution and revenge and vengeance for that. Because that just makes sense for this self-contained film. And when you just watch this, when you watch the film in a vacuum, forget about so when you just watch it, the film as in a vacuum, it works well. Because that moment that you see uh, Jack, a young Jack Navy busy kill think his parents, like, you're like, wow, you're like, damn. It's, it gets really real. And then that even sort of just gives the finale an extra edge as opposed to, oh, the Joker is just some guy he, he takes us. Once, because it was made so personal, and now facing a guy for the reason as to why he is pretty much mad and crazy and is in this spiral of being of dressing up as his bat, it's 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 added a lot more weight to the to, to, to the story. So I think you know, but I just think like the biggest one to Batman, apart from the superb performance by Jack Nicholson as Joker. Oh song will dance, Batman's head in the lens. Tell me what do you know about <laughs> He stole my balloons. He stole my balloons! How do you get one of those? Things, but God, you don't know that. Like, look, it's not like I have been quoting that ever since the film I've watched. Actually, this is a film I've watched more times than any other film. But I just think that the thing that I think works so well that I don't think people will hit is the way that Michael Keaton played Bruce Wayne and Batman, because I think that he made. And the beauty about this was that it felt it's this film, or rather these two films, but this film more than any other Batman film really felt as if Bruce Wayne and Batman were completely different people. There were times when I looked at Batman and was like, wait, is that Michael Keaton there? Is that really Bruce Wayne? Because it felt so different based on just how he played Bruce Wayne and how awkward he made Bruce Wayne feel and just how uncomfortable he was as Bruce Wayne. And when you just look, look at Batman, just how cold he was and everything. And when because there was a, an interview that Michael Keaton made and he said that the, the suit was very un, uncomfortable. You couldn't move your head, you couldn't really hear anything, it was heavy to, to move in. And he said that rather than just focus on the frustration of the suit, he said, no, he made, he walked the suits into the performance of, of the film. He said, no, no, this is good, let me walk with this. So that's awkwardness and that difficulty of being in that suit, I think played in so the psychology he had in 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 the film in the film and i think for me one of the best in my opinion the best scene in any batman film is when um is in is in the bat cave and the back and forth between batman and vicky and vickyville in that bat cave you know so it was like um he's like got it what people like just the way that was done was just mm, beautiful you know so yeah man batman Clippers people look Batman and Satan, I just call it Batman because for me, I still feel it is still the true definitive Batman in terms of obviously getting the... I'm briefly with, with the Joker, of course, talk about Heath Ledger, but why Jack Nicholson's performance was so incredible was people knew Jack Nicholson was going to be good because this is the guy that did One Flow Over the, the, the Cuckoo's Nest, the last detail, but he actually exceeded expectations because... People didn't, because you have to understand this, that before that film, Jack Dickinson was known as a serious actor. Very dramatic, very, 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 very serious and so forth. But, and Jack Dickinson didn't say that he tried to scare kids and he scared me. One of you, he scared me. It's just how incredibly larger than life he was and just how mad and out of the world he was that you, people were like, damn, this is Jack Dickinson because you could just see the guy really went all out and just the diff, just the way he executed the lines and just how he made so many lines so so iconic. It is such an iconic piece of performance and it's really, for me, it's exemplified the joke because this guy, he is a clown. <laughs> you know, he's a clown, but he's a very sinister clown, but he's still a clown who jokes and cracks jokes, but he cracks jokes, but is also very creepy and, and very weird. So I just think that for me, it's really represented the why the Joker is so scary because this is a 
he's a he's a joker that cracks jokes, but he's also very dangerous as well. So, but yeah, man, um, an incredible, incredible masterpiece of a film that really stands that test.